and we're going to learn about the art of map making today. So here I've got a pirate map showing for you, okay? So think about Six Flags, the Six Flags map, okay? This is the one from 1980, very, very large, it shows every single ride, and you would walk around with it, okay? Now we use our phones, or you can use the paper one, but now you can just use your phone to find out where to go. But back in the day, this is how you would do it. Now, one thing that would help you find your way around are legend symbols or a key, a map key. It tells what other things are or where things are, okay? So this is the legend that was on the 1980 version, okay? So blue dots would mean there's a ride there, Pink dots mean restaurants, orange means gift shops, yellow means guest, guest services, and then of course you've got your restroom signs too, okay? Here is the uh, 2020 Holiday in the Park map, okay? So it's got more um, on the legend than it does on the map. It's got the main rides, but it doesn't have every ride. So that's why this key is so important. So you've got all these little symbols that tell where things are on this map. So we're going to have fun and make a treasure map or a pirate map. You get to pick, okay? So let's look at some of these examples that have been made, okay? So this is from a restaurant called Victoria. I don't know where it is, but you can see that the artist used lots of line quality. You've got thick lines, skinny lines, lots of texture to show the landforms like forests and mountains and volcanoes and islands and so on. Here's a compass rose. You're gonna to have to put a compass rose in yours too. Instead of putting a legend on this one, the artist just chose to put kind of a symbol for what is there in that spot. They even had some fun and put a little sea serpent here on that. Yes, you can have fun with yours. Here's a dolphin and fish. You can see how they chose to do their mountains with a zigzag line. And you've got palm trees to kind of show what kind of, you know, land it is. You've got texture lines on the water as well. Another one that's really good at line quality, some thick and thin lines. Okay, check out the compass rose, looks great. Another sea serpent. You can even write things like, here be dragons, beware. Um, you can draw a path line that goes to the treasure. You can also put some shading lines to on the land, just to kind of indicate that it still is land. Notice they've got kind of a double line going around that landform. They even got like a hurricane symbol here. This one is colored. You don't have to color yours. You have a choice between coloring yours or staining yours. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But if you do choose to color, it needs to be colored top to bottom, left to right. So yes, even the water you know, in the background needs to have a light color on it. So you've also got, this compass rose is very, very basic. They just showed what direction north would be. So this is from a play. Okay. Here's another example of one that's colored and one that will be stained. You can even turn your landform into a picture of something like this artist chose to make their land or their island look like a skull. Here's one that's really detailed. You can see they put just some horizontal hatch lines to show where the water is. Look at that compass rose with the, with the bones and the skull for north. Oh, that is so cool. Here's another one that's both stained and colored. Yes, you can do that, okay? There's their compass rose, different symbols for what is there. They made their um, water kind of on the interior of the map and the landforms are kind of on the outsides. And this one um, resembles, you know, the actual earth. They didn't make it up. This is Walt Disney World's Treasure Island. Okay, very, very detailed with the trees and the things in the path. You can see the texture of the bumpy paths. Okay, you can see how they drew their dock with lots of lines. Here's their legend or their map key. So they just use numbers to tell where things are. So now 
here's how you will start creating yours, okay? So, first you lightly sketch what you want your main landform to be and kind of you can also even kind of lightly sketch in other things like your um, compass rose. I'm trying to make mine look like a dragon so hold your pencil when you're drawing this hold your pencil halfway up so you're not pressing down really hard okay you don't want to hold your pencil here when you're first starting here so you can be very so you can just sketch your light lines then you'll ink it in and then you can start adding that line quality, you know, a thicker line on the most important stuff, skinnier lines um, on the other things like waterfalls and a cliff, okay. palm trees, you can put an island there, show your texture for what it is like water, okay, here's more cliffs. So you would draw kind of a second parallel line and then you get those skinny lines going in between, all going kind of the same direction, okay? You'll start sketching your compass rows and any other little details that you want. And then you would ink them in, of course. So sketch it first, then ink it in. Again, line quality is something I'm looking for. Thick lines, skinny lines, like that. Um, here's how to one way one way to show a forest okay with pine trees you can do the little fun things like mermaids and dragons and sea serpents and put scary faces on the mountains and things here's my compass rose and honestly i got the idea off of google i googled compass roses and this isn't an exact copy i changed parts about it to make it my own but that's an example in where you can go to find a compass rose. Okay, so here is my finished product. Okay, so I'm expecting your map to take up the majority of your paper. I'm expecting it to be inked in. Okay, and here are some things. Well, let me go back to the other page. Let's go to this one. Okay, so you have to have a legend that tells what things are. It could be symbols, it could be numbers, but you have to have a legend on there. It has to have longitude and latitude lines. And they are those are your lines that go up and down and side to side, horizontal, and they need to be evenly spaced. Okay, just like on a real map. I don't understand this art. Then go to um, Google and look up longitude and latitude lines. Or if you have a social studies book, you need to look in there. Okay. You need textures to show landforms. I'm looking for textures like on the water, like waves. I'm looking for bumps for mountains. I'm looking for, you know, lines to show the cliffs. I, that's what I mean by that. So those are the things you have to have. As for other things, you have to pick. 10 or more than from this list, forest, a bay or a gulf, a desert, the plains, a peninsula, a lagoon, rope bridge, waterfall, river, lake, mountains, a coral reef, castle, monster, and of course a treasure, okay? All right, and then you will use those things. Okay, now let me go back to this to show you how to finish this. Okay. All right. So after you're done, and this is how you would do your longitude and latitude lines. If you don't have a ruler, you use anything that's straight. Like your Chromebook has a straight edge. You can use that to draw your lines. Okay. Up and down, side to side. Now we want to make it look like a map. Okay. Like an old map that you found. So very gently crumple up your paper to make it look bumpy. Then you're going, if you're not going to color this, then you have to stain it. Okay. So these are coffee grounds. You can use coffee grounds from your grown ups coffee maker, you know, the ones that they've used already or even fresh ones. And then you just add a little bit of water to it. And if you don't have a paintbrush, you can use a Q-tip. You can use an old toothbrush that nobody wants anymore. Or you can even use, you know, a wet finger, dip it in the wet coffee, and then just kind of stamp with your finger on the paper to kind of give it a stained kind of look. 
Okay, here at school, we're going to be using sponges and kind of sponging that coffee everywhere to give it this old aged kind of look. Okay, so if you don't have coffee, if your grown up doesn't use coffee or drink coffee, you can use tea, you can use Coke, and you know, anything, any kind of beverage that is brown will work. Okay, I don't know if soup would work or not. Anyway. So that's how this should look when you're done. It has to have those things and the list is on this page, okay? All right, have fun.